This is Terror House Radio with Matt Forney and Brighton Proctor. Yeah, welcome to a Terror House Radio episode number 54. I'm Matt Forney, your Johnny and Loquacious host, and the founder and editor in chief of Terror House Press. With me is my co host and producer, the world's only comedian, Brighton Proctor. Hey, bud. Good morning. It's not morning, but thank you for the No, sun, no, man. no, no. It's morning for you, lazy bones. What? Because I woke up at noon? I woke up at noon. Oh, I stayed up too late talking to boys on the chat lines. That's you. <laughs> That's what you do. Uh... <laughs> oh, I'm mad. Oh, Sarah said what? Oh, my. That's you. <laughs> In a little cheerleader outfit. Oh. I love. I also now have like the voice of like a British butler. I, wh- <clears throat> uh, that's not a British butler. <sighs> it's all British people. No, yeah. it's British sounding. Oh, I'm Matt. So I guess it is a little British. Oh, I'm Matt Forney. Ooh, gossip. <laughs> that's you, though. That's how you sound when you're talking to people on the phone in the '80s. <laughs> I love how I'm not even using this for nefarious purposes. What? I thought you, I thought the I thought the punchline here was that I was gonna be cybering with gay dudes. No, no, it's just you know, no, it's just you talking to because I'm gay. Yeah, Let's clip that, clip that, clip that. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I I wouldn't. No, I just was gonna call you a lady today. I figured that's way better. Just Close a lady. Enough. Close enough, I guess. Lady Matt. If you find this entertainment worthy of uh, of your time and you have questions and comments, streamlabs.com slash terrorhouse magazine, send us a tip and we'll read it later on the show. Stop being <laughs> cheap. Stop being cheap. Here's a, here's a tip for the police. <laughs> You're a girl. <laughs> you got to be arrested by the fashion police because that skirt just ain't working. I mean, um, well, there's a certain individual who already got the uh, got that got that uh, got that arrest. Right. You yeah. want to talk to the, the obvious news that everyone's talking about? Yeah, everyone's still talking about too, which is uh, something speaks speaks very loudly of either just the internet <laughs> or our side of the internet. I I don't know, but society uh, society in general. Um, <sighs> Have, have any of you watching heard of a man named Chris Chan? Yes. <laughs> I, I had to I had to explain this to my friends on Saturday because they were they were vaguely familiar with who he was, but how do you compress the insanity? I'll, I'll start for the most recent revelation. He raped his mother and was arrested for it. Yeah. Well, that yeah, they added the incest charge later because he was well, uh he was arrested well, that, because he violated the uh, protection order, right? So um, no, he was arrested. He's only been charged with incest so far. That's what he was arrested for. Really? Because I know. But the but the sheriff's office said they were going to lay additional charges. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's, I mean, he's, you know, he took that money, violated the protection order. There's a whole thing. I don't know. Again, also allegedly, 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 you're supposed to say that allegedly. Yes, but, he allegedly raped his mother, but right. we also have multiple communications from him confirming it. So. Allegedly, alleged confirm. You know, there's a legal thing here. Yes, yes. It came out on Friday that he admitted to having sex with his mother in a Discord call with Tranny. You know, because because um, that's the world. That's the world we live in today. Shortly afterwards, <laughs> he was um, he was served with an emergency protective order prohibiting him from contacting his mother or living at their house. Uh, his mother was removed to the hospital for a senior's care inspection. Which I assume for it turned up evidence of sexual contact, which is why the arrest warrant was issued for him on Sunday. I, I don't. I don't think that's why. I think it's because he took that money. He took the the money, and then. I mean, if that was the case, they would have charged him with it. Right. They might have. I mean, I don't know, man. I'm not a cop. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just a simple man in Florida that has but been. We- <laughs> <laughs> watched a man in a dress. But we haven't. We arrested. But yeah, we'll get to the. We'll get to the stealing money thing in a bit. He was apparently going to crash with like some family members, but he, he 
they apparently said no, and he was going to be homeless for at least one night because he has no money. Because, yeah, this guy spends all his money as soon as he gets it. Um, my guess there is actually he didn't bother asking these family members in advance. He just drove to their house. He'd be like, can I stay here? And they were understand me like, no. Yeah, I mean, any of that would make sense. None of it is surprising. This was surprising, but now I've come to just be like, oh, this is what happened. And as with all things. That then, I, then he apparently, you know, was revealed that he has access to his mother's bank accounts because he transferred a seven hundred fifty dollars to um, to himself. Mm. Um, this is all revealed by Noel, the admin of Kiwi Farms, who had been helping Chris and decided to just cut him off at that point because he was sick of being lied to. Um, he was staying at Chris Chan was staying in a Roach Motel on the outskirts of Richmond, um, where the cops <laughs> the cops arrested him. Uh, and it was filmed by uh, Ethan Ralph of the Kill, Kill Stream. Yeah, he was uh, he was remanded back to uh, his home county yesterday and charged with incest. Oh, by the way, um, he identifies as a she. Technically, his mm -hmm. legal name is Christine Weston Chandler. What his license but, says? Uh, yeah, but um, because Virginia Virginia allows people to stay in the 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 the, the prison, the jail of their assign of their preferred gender, but only if they've had surgery, which he has not. So he is in the men's jail in um, in Green County, Virginia. Yeah, I mean, he's also he's also not been given he's not been given bail for no. obvious reasons. No, yeah. Because I should also mention he's never he's a repeat offender. He's been arrested twice. He's he was arrested about a decade ago for uh, running a guy over in his car. Uh, his mother was also arrested at the same time for assaulting a police officer. Um, and then back in 2014, he was arrested for macing a GameStop employee. But even that describing it like that makes this still sound quasi normal. Um. No, not particularly, but, you know, I don't know. In that world, I, mean, I, I Like, in order to explain the macing thing, I have to explain that uh, this guy with, this guy's obsessed with Sonic the Hedgehog, and Sega redesigned the character a few years back to have differently colored arms, and he was up in arms over this, so he was going around to various stores, GameStops, Walmarts, and defacing Sonic merchandise. Was it more than just the one, though? I thought it was just the one. Uh, he's, he done it, he, he did it at multiple places. This is a place that he had been banned from already and then came back in disguise. That the disguise was, being that was, the, that was the whole trans thing. He was like, ha ha, I'm going to get him this time. The long con. Genius, it wasn't, Christian. it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the trans thing. Um, his disguise was a pair of my little pony sunglasses. Sure. I mean, that's, that'll fool him every time. Yeah. And he maced the guy while he was walking out of the, after he was booted from the GameStop. Yeah, as he was walking out, I, yeah. I mean, he didn't even get the guy in the eyes. It was like all over his clothes or whatever. But, uh, yeah, there's a video of that, just like everything. There's a fucking video of it. Don't and, call anybody. Yeah. Yeah, that was the last time I had thought about him until the other day and was like, oh, what kind of a weird – huh, okay, then. that's great. Um, so, so I don't know. So you missed you missed a uh, if that was the last time you thought about him, you missed a lot of great episodes in Chris Three. Yeah, I'm sure I did. I don't I, listen. Like I, it's weird to me. I've started watching it. Me and Erica started watching it finally because it was always recommended to me that forty fucking hour you know YouTube series by like another not quite as crazy but still clearly some type of autistic crazy guy who was like time for me to catalog this man's entire life and do a comprehensive history. Which that type of dedication is bizarre to me, like in anything, you know, uh, especially for something like that. But started watching that uh, just the other day. I'm on like part nine, just finished that one. So I'm going to catch up on every single thing because why not? I have nothing else going on in my life. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I don't know. All of it's just so fucking weird. When did everything get so goddamn weird? <sighs> when uh, when a guy named uh, when a guy named Adam and a girl girl named Eve and Apple that they weren't supposed to, no. I think that's when it started getting weird. Well, I don't know about the history of that, but it uh, the whole goddamn thing just just fucking weirds me out. It weirds yeah. me. Out. It's gonna be a thing to watch though. It's I mean this is gonna unfold now over God knows how long. 
and I'm going to have to hear about it. And I'm, I'm, I'm just, instead of trying to avoid it, like I avoid most things that aren't, you know, me, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go along for the ride on this one. You know, I'm not watching the Olympics. I might as well watch this shit unfold. Fuck it. Well, it is an Olympics of a type. It's an Olympic, an Olympics of insanity and monstrousness. It's just pretty goddamn funny. Well, like, here's something I have to explain. A, a recent incident in history that, uh, you know, I explained this to one of my friends on Saturday, and, like, his jaw dropped and his eyes went wide. But anyway, back in 2016, Chris Chan was listening to uh, Sissy Hypno videos because he thought they would help him spontaneously grow a vagina. Wow. Uh, they will. He had uh, he had about like a year or so before gotten the piercing on his taint uh, that he called the unclit because he thought it would be a good substitute for a clitoris. Sure, uh, he had had it removed after it started migrating. His skin rejected it, you know, etc. But the removed the removed uh, piercing combined with his already bad hygiene. This guy almost never showers, and everyone who's been in contact with him said he stinks. This bad hygiene combined to create an abscess on his taint. When he saw the abscess, his immediate thought was, the sissy hip that was working, I'm growing a vagina. And he took a knife and he sliced the abscess open. That is the pictures on the internet. That is how vaginas are made. That's, uh, that's how it is. That's how, how they're made. He then, you know, when people were understandably like horrified, like, you know, he was like, I went to the hospital and they said, I'm fine. I'm growing a vagina. A doctor checked me out. I don't think a doctor would say that. Well, maybe. I mean, who knows? I don't know what doctors are saying now. After Doctors, I think they'll, t I don't really trust what doctors have to say now these days. So maybe they did. Maybe they did, man. I don't know. All right. There's, he you can tell me you trust doctors. Well, he was he was proven he was proven to be lying on that one. So the eventually, you know, Through the doctor, I uh, think so. <laughs> told him to go back to the doctor and get the thing checked out. Apparently, all he did that time was just tell the doctor that his balls hurt, so they prescribed Tylenol, and then the, his uh, his enablers said, "Okay, go back to the fucking hospital and don't come back until you can show us the discharge papers that showed you had this abscess treated." Well, I'll bet there was plenty of discharge. I know that. Uh, I but feel I bad. Yeah, I feel bad. Gila Med uh, Medley is like, would like to listen, but I'm eating lunch. Um, yeah, I heard about that's the... your fault for eating a late lunch. All right. Now, well, I don't I'm... care where in the world you are. I assume you too are in my time zone. You're eating a late lunch. All right. It's bad for you anyway. I don't know why. I'm a doctor now. Dr. Proctor is here. Dr. Proctor, the proctologist, bend over. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have not been able to eat properly ever since I heard about the motherfucking on Friday morning, so. Oh, you wimp. You just, you just, you just drink and drink, and then I had a whole pizza yesterday is what I had. Uh, it was good. I like it. Sorry, I like being sober. I'm a member of AA now. I like being sober. Are you a member of AA now? That's fucking dorky. I'm on my third step. What's oh, uh, I forget what the three uh, with the twelve. It's when steps it's up. when you, it's when you accept that you're. No wait, that's the first. Yeah, the step. first is you accept that you're powerless. That you're powerless. Yeah. Was the it? second? I think is when you give it give yourself over to God or yeah. You know, no, no, no. Third step is when you give yourself over to your. Uh, personal power, or however they phrase it. It could be a doorknob. Okay, yeah, right. That's an indoctrination thing. Uh, what are the 12 in, steps? Well, in practice, um, it always ends up being the group. I mean, when they yeah. originally started, it was supposed to be God, but, you know, religion is bad, so they turned it into, it can be whatever you want. But in practice, it's the group. Yeah, oh, absolutely, dude. Like, AA people are really into AA, and they're just awful. Uh, all right, let's go through these steps here. Step four is made searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. So you basically got to look back and then you got to tell the whole group like, yeah, I was a prick. I used to do these podcasts and, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, number five is God again, admitted to God, to ourselves and to another human being, the exact, oh yeah. 
So hold on. I thought it's step five. No, no. Step eight is the worst one. I've had so many people come to me with their fucking step eight bullshit where they go around and apologize to everybody. And it's like, okay, you know, one, half those guys go back to drinking anyway, at least half, you know, they were out drinking and partying again after that shit. But like, it's just so fucking awkward. And it says right there, like, unless it would harm the person by doing so, you're harming my, fu you're, you're harming my entire buzz. You know, when you show up and you're like, I'm on step fucking eight. It's like, great. I wonder why I hadn't seen you in a few months. You know, oh, I'm on step eight. Time to apologize to Bryden for coming over and, you know, peeing on his floor or whatever. And it's like, yeah, it was pretty lame. Uh, but also, also, an apology that late isn't going to do anything for most I mean, people. Yeah. Particularly if it was something serious. Right. Like, I mean, if you, you know, like got drunk and were like, I'm sorry, you don't have legs anymore. You know, yeah, that'd be an issue. But... <laughs> It's like, oh yeah, you were a dickhead at at, a, at my house one time because you drank too much. Con I, yeah, it's fine, dude. And and with regards to the half thing, it's actually way worse than that. Statistically, going to AA is worse for you if you're trying to quit drinking than doing nothing at all. I would imagine that. I mean, I'm like ninety five percent of people who go into the AA program start drinking again. Mm -hmm. um, most within the first three months. Uh, almost all of them within a year. Yeah, I mean, I can see that you're really fresh off of quitting. I mean, like, but the thing is, no matter what you're quitting, like, relapse is something that happens a ton, you know? Like, uh, that's, that's, I, I, I don't know. But AA just doesn't seem that successful. And there are people who, like, will go to three, four meetings a fucking day. And they're so intertwined with the goddamn legal system now that yeah, it's you can, ridiculous. You can, you can be ordered by a judge to go to AA, which yeah. seems like a violation of separation of church and state. But no, it could be your higher power could be a doorknob, Matt. So yeah, if people want to quit drinking, I'm all for it. If he, you know, my higher know. power is my balls. Well, it could be, according to the big book. You know, uh, I wonder if someone has actually done that at an AA meeting. That'd probably. Hilarious. Oh, probably some guy who has to was court ordered to go into it. Yeah, he was probably like, I don't know, it's my balls. That's my higher power. It's my balls. Sign my fucking paper so I can get out of here. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I don't know why he has that accent, but he does. And of course, there, there's a. I don't know if it's uh, okay. up on. I don't know if it's up on the internet anymore. But there's a really good uh, website called the Orange Papers, which just goes into how AA doesn't work, how it's a cult, it's got all these cult-like tendencies, and how the owner was a complete lunatic. He conceived the idea. Bill W. or Bill Wilson, whoever his name was, he conceived the idea of AA while he was tweaking on Belladonna, which was a hallucinogen used to used to treat alcoholism in the old days. <laughs> that fucking rules. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he spent the rest of his life living off of his wife because uh, he refused to get a job. Just Dudes, fucking rock! Yes, ladies, get out there in the workforce, men. Stay at home and do whatever the fuck you feel like. That's what I say. That's what I say. That's a perfect tomorrow. People ask me all the time, Matt, all the time. The paparazzi hitting me up all the time as I walk into Publix and, and things like that. And I'm like, whoa, calm down, everybody. They go, Bryden, Bryden, what, would, what should America look like? And I go, women in the workforce. Men, optional. Oh, yeah, he also, you know, he cheated on her numerous times. You know, that's yeah. where the whole joke of uh, 13th Stepping came from. Uh, he also relapsed multiple times, and he begged for whiskey on his deathbed. Well, who doesn't? Uh, he, he figured a guy who runs a group about quitting alcohol would not crave alcohol so strongly. You think a guy that was, who ran like a weird embezzling scheme cult organization would be a hypocrite? I'm trying to be positive. I'm trying to. I'm trying to look on the bright side, Brian. We, we can't. We can't all be masturbating now, as like you. I'm not right now. <laughs> what? How do I know you're even wearing pants? Um. <laughs> He had to think about that one. He had to think about that Well, one. it's not required. Okay. You know, was it uh, Stelter? Huh? He doesn't wear pants sometimes. And he's on television. He's the most trusted man against the media. Me, second most trusted. So think about that, Mr. Fucking Pants.
Huh? Oh, I'm mad. I wear fucking pants when I'm not wearing a skirt. <laughs> Idiots. Nice, but, nice, nice shirt, by the way. Thank you. Erica got me this. Um. Yeah, add it to my collection of. Uh, I like once we like I had some ironic shirts, and then then we started doing the uh, uh, the the show with the video and uh, like that. Eh, now's the time, huh? I got hats. Like I have no real radio talent, so I'll just kind of be a visual gag. So at least until you get on the on the camera, and that'll be good. You know, that'll be nice. Because then you'll make everybody gag. Oh! <laughs> Terror drops. House Radio. We need drops, dude. We need drops. We need just the all the time. Just burr, 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 Terror House Radio. Because that would, can you imagine? We could fill probably at least 15% of the show with those drops. That way we have to talk less. Because I don't know what I'm talking about half the time. You know, I'm not sure if people have. They probably have. I don't know what I'm fucking saying most of the time. I kind of just use live streaming and podcasting as an excuse, like all artists, as an excuse to just get drunk all the time. <laughs> so I think it's going to work out. Just get drunk and scream and, mm -hmm. you know, basically, basically like a, every, every other crazy person does, except you, you know, uh, get fame and fortune from it. I do not, though. I do not get any fame and fortune from this. Uh, I mean, I've had, I, I've, as a result of being on the internet, I've had bad things happen to me. But outside of that, you know, not much uh, good, good fortune has come my way. Nor do I think it ever will. Uh, mostly as a result of the fact that I take everything as an excuse to just get completely fucking hammered. Um, you know, man, I don't drink when I'm not uh, not streaming or doing a podcast. Like, I just, I don't. You know, those are my days off. I'm usually in bed resting from the podcast or stream that I did the night before. Resting, you know, tears resting. falling down your face. No, no, no. I'm too One dehydrated. One hand down your underwear. No, I'm too dehydrated for tears. I too dehydrated for masturbation? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know why you're so obsessed with my penis today. Maybe that's the topic of discussion. When you orgasm, a bang flag just folds out like in Looney Tunes. <laughs> that would fucking rule. Holy shit. That would be the best thing. Outside of being like, you know, like coming ink. Like that would be the best thing. I wish I had a novelty dick. One that did just like, you know, if you touched it, it would go and shock your hand. Like... <laughs> It's called <laughs> that. That one is the anti homo repellent. <laughs> oh, no, wait, no, wait. It's the prison rape protection system. You know how they have those, uh, those, those like anti rape things, uh, uh, where like the woman will put it, it's got like the blades. Oh, the South African anti rape con. Yeah, yeah, which is like a great idea. Uh, what if you put one of those in your butt when you went to prison? Well, I mean, you have to poop around it somehow, so. I think we got a million dollar idea here. We got a. Also, it's got blades in it, so, like, you dudes would probably take it out and use it as a weapon. Yeah. Yeah, they frown upon those. They don't let you have it. How'd you like to get shanked with some guy's anti rape protection butt plug? Actually, wait, wait, wait. I have an idea. Make them out of sandpaper. What, you just shove sandpaper in your ass? Uh, well, I mean, the inner the inner part of the sandpaper will be, you know, you right, know. smooth, and you can, yeah. I I just think that it would end up with sandpaper being shoved further into your ass. That that could would also be a problem with the blades. No, no, because it's like it's plastic, right? So it's like this this you know. There, so it's like when the wiener goes in, it can't get out, and then you have to go to the doctor to get it taken off. And I would imagine it fucks your pecker up real bad. But you know, with that, there's like a, a, a I guess you could make a plastic casing around it and put the sandpaper in the inside. Yeah, that that would that would work. It would also, you know, you couldn't repurpose it as a weapon. Um, right. 
it would probably be easier to pull in and take out because it'd be lighter weight, you know. You could you could you could deploy these after, you know, after lights out, you know, after the shower, after, you know, first meal. Or, you know what? I agree with the with my feminist sisters. We could just teach men to stop raping. <sighs> That's not gonna wash, I think, in a prison. No. No, they seem they it's, they seem it's part of their culture. They See, seem to like you it. You have to respect their culture, Bryden. I you know, people keep saying that about things and uh you Nobody's ever given me a good be, fucking reason. You cannot be a, stop being a colonialist, Bryden. Stop mm. stop it with your, you know, free man colonialism and let the proud prisoners enjoy their long established cultural folkways. Is there I mean, like I imagine prison rape is a rather universal thing, right? Uh, but it seems like there's probably less of it in some of the nicer prisons than versus like the American prisons. Like, like let's let's take the Philippines for example. Like the Phil the, the Philippines are a fucking mess. You know, it's Duterte's over there. He's like, if you don't take the vaccine, I'll drop you from a helicopter and shoot you up with pig medicine and just like weird shit. And now you know, uh, it, 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 it can't be great to go to prison there. Do you think they're raping over there? Are they raping to the same degree that like the dudes here in a, in some of our worst prisons are? I mean, they love it. That's just part of what they do. Dude, I've been to the Philippines. They are raping. They're raping. I've had I, I've had I had so many Filipino dudes try and you know try just really buy guys buy guys who have tried to have sex with me. Yeah, but that's different. That's different. Like if you're at a bar, they're like ah, and they try to hit on you, and they and they fail. Versus a prison rape, which... Well, it's like they're already inclined to be gay, so situationally gay. Yeah, but do you think maybe they're nicer about it? You know, they're like, oh, I'll just find a gay guy. Versus the, you know, put this Kool-Aid on your lips, well, white boy. This, this Philippi of... The Philippines have had several like, incidents of, uh, of like mass rape. This is something the president actually got in trouble for, like, uh, yes, when he was right. running... Uh, this involved a woman, actually. This was this was about five years ago. Uh, well, the actual incident happened like thirty years ago. There was a prison break in uh, the city that Duterte was mayor of, Davao, um, and the inmates gang raped an Australian missionary, then killed her. And the and the and the mayor commented to the effect of like, "Such a tragedy. She was so pretty. The mayor should have been first. Fuck. All and when right. people told him to apologize, he said, "No, I'm not apologizing. It was a, it was a, you know, I was, I meant it." I mean, it's a pretty good line. It's cold. It's uh, pretty, uh, you know, it's not the nicest thing to say. Uh, it's pretty cold-hearted, but it's pretty good, pretty good burn, I guess. Um, he's 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 done that. There was an incident where he was like speaking to like uh, newlyweds at a mass wedding, and he said. Uh, I'm paraphrasing here. Uh, I've got something to give to all of you, and this is uh, a very special gift, and it's for the women only. Men, sorry, you don't get anything because I'm not a queer. <laughs> God damn. And people complained about Trump? <laughs> he was called the Trump of Asia. He sounds like it, dude. He sounds like, <laughs> he, sounds like he fucking rules. Oh god damn that fucking rules. That's uh yeah. What's this guy's also, name? Uh Duterte, Rodrigo hmm. Duterte. There's also the Oh no 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 I, I know Duterte. He, so he was the mayor of that town and then he he's you know now he's yeah, now he's the president. So and he says crazy shit all the fucking time. Which is hilarious until you like, you know, he was like you have to live there. It sounds fucking awful. The guy's a madman. He's a dictator. Well, I mean, he wasn't good for the first year. He was getting rid of all the drug wards. Right. And that's great and all. And then now it's, you know, it's like also smoking cigarettes. And I'm like, I've never seen a Filipino not smoke cigarettes. That, that, that bothers me a little less because, like, the pollution there is so bad that, like, I can kind of see where they're coming from. Cigarettes. It's a start. It's not a start. Cigarettes are not polluting the... Have you been reading left wing Twitter again? You need to quit. I'm, I'm a I'm a cigarette smoker, Bryden. Um, it's fine here. Yeah, I didn't I didn't say that you also didn't hate yourself. I'm just you know, 
like pollution, pollution, pollution. Nah, I don't, I don't believe in it. I say, I say, dump everything in the water. Who gives a shit? It's not my water. I don't live there. Deal with that fish, dumbass oh, yeah. fish. Oh yeah, and uh, Duterte's other credit was that he called uh, Obama a son of a bitch numerous times. Well, the the exact phrase can also be translated as "son of a whore," which is uh, not as funny, but uh, technically more accurate. Well, why is that big of a why is that that big of a deal? It's not like he, you know, it's not like they're friends. He's not going to that seven hundred person uh, super well, spreader event that Obama, well, you know, was planning. Well, well, when he was president, that was an Obama became president. That was an Obama's last term, and Obama was like, "Oh, human rights abuses in the Philippines." And Duterte just said, "Like he's a you're a son of a bitch. Don't come anywhere near my country." See, I think both those guys are fucking pricks. Uh, so that's all right. Fair enough. I don't know. At least Duterte's funny. Obama was never funny. I mean, when was he ever funny? Obama had to have been funny sometimes. He was right. funny on accident. No, like, I mean, he did that. What, but even then, it wasn't really, like, funny, funny. It was, like, peculiar funny. Yeah, it wasn't, like, Trump funny. You know, like, Trump was hilarious. Well, there was the time where he, like, threw out the the first pitch, uh, you know, when the baseball season got started and he was wearing mom jeans. <laughs> that was that was peculiar funny. I don't remember that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. He did that one. Thing. I know that, like, uh, uh, like Daily Show or whatever, really liked. He did that mic drop thing, and everybody was like, "He's black." Was kind of the whole deal with that. But there's also that picture. I think it was in 2013 that like Jezebel gushed over, where he's like on the phone, he's looking all sassy, like, "Hey, girlfriend." Yeah. See, I don't. I don't remember. I think I've. I think I've just kind of blacked out most of the the years that America blacked out for those eight years. Uh, well, it's like, you know, they say, you know, you know, Clinton was our first black president. You know, Obama was our first gay president. Trump was our first Jewish president. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. We haven't had a Jewish president, huh? You would have thought that would have happened by now. I mean, aside from aside from uh, two, they've all been culled from uh, you know the white you know Protestant right. angles. So you know it's not that surprising. No, because I mean we had the Catholic with JFK. People were worried about that, but just like uh, you, how many of them have run more? You would think. Like I, I would just you would think that there would be one of them. I know. That's like I know. Lieberman Jewish. Ran, Lieberman ran for president once. I'm pretty sure. But there's got to be one that's like a quarter. You know, I know we haven't had like a real. Oh, you're, 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 you're also know. forgetting. You're forgetting about Bernie Sanders. Yeah, but I mean, he never had a shot in hell, dude. Uh, but there's got to be one that was a quarter. Bloomberg. I, fucking Bloomberg doesn't count, dude. He was just. He, he was a goddamn. Pop, we thought we got rid of fucking pop up ads. Bloomberg was the pop up ad of of presidential candidates. He just it would bloop wherever you were. You saw fucking Bloomberg. Then people saw him actually talk. And we're like, this guy sucks. That was he was a I don't nobody's gonna remember fucking Bloomberg for his presidential bid, you know. You get in a Bloomberg magazine, that's it. I'll bet if you go back, there's somebody back there that's like a quarter Jewish. Had to have been. Well, I, I think I, I think John Kerry, who ran was president the nominee in 2004, 2004 said he had Jewish Jewish ancestry. Probably yeah. not a quarter, but like some ancestry. I don't know. I think I might know. I, I might figure out what I'm going to do with the day. One of them, I'm sure, back there. It's like Nixon comes to mind, but wasn't him. Nixon was a Quaker. I know. I mean, it just seems like where did where did it all go wrong? What? There's got to be somebody that was like, eh, you know. Well, where did it all go wrong? Well, there were a bunch of cross-dressers who decided to throw some tea into an harbor, and it was all downhill from there. Yeah, they did do that. But that was pretty awesome, though. I mean, they tried to blame it on the on the, uh, on the the natives, man. Well, that, that was... <laughs> that's hilarious. Like, what fucking, you know, cowardly dickheads? You know, we're like, oh, the Boston Tea Party, yay! And it's like, they just tried to blame it on the natives. <laughs> They all dressed up like the natives and did it. It's hilarious. Uh, I think it's hilarious, man. I don't know. I think it rules. And toilet water. 
who's a nice guy, he's going to be a nice guy today, says that it went wrong when we let the Catholics in. I, I, hate, to, don't, I hate to break it to you, but there was a cat. I hate to break it to you, there was a Catholic who signed the Declaration of Independence and, the, and helped ratify the Constitution. So technically, we were already here. Mm. Yeah, so toilet water is really unpatriotic then, and he hates the founding of America. I was going to agree with him because letting the Irish in was a fucking mistake. Yeah, the I well, the Irish are fucking just terrible people. Like terrible, terrible people. The Irish are just goddamn awful. All they do is just sit around and get drunk and ruin fucking podcasts. Well, the Irish, you know, they they they're very nepotistic. You know, they they form gigantic ethnic political machines to benefit themselves. Um, they have a disproportionate influence on uh, politics and culture. Wait, who am I talking about? The Irish. Yeah, yeah, the Irish. The Irish. They also, they you know, they also are more loyal to a foreign country than they are to America. I mean, and let's not even get into the Irish and their stranglehold on uh, media and 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 culture. You know, and the weirdest part is how the Irish. Everyone seems blind to noticing who who is Irish. So it's you know I know we should we never should have. I do legitimately mean the Irish though that. Uh, Good lord. Like Ian, I, I got I got terrible blood in me, dude. I got the Irish. Ian, Stricken with the Irish. Ian Paisley did nothing wrong. So <laughs> I uh, Yep. You ever have that happen to you? What? Well, you don't stir your 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 mixed drink enough and you got your straw at the bottom. And then you get nothing but uh you're thinking of a sip of a mixed drink, and then you just get well, that's just all vodka. Just all of that one. It hits you too quickly. Ugh. Yeah, occasionally, but uh, you know, I don't drink mixed drinks that often because I'm straight. What do you drink? Shit Gen fucking Mexico beer, you goddamn retard? What do you drink? I drink beer like, you know, usually. Well, I drink like beer because I'm a fat fucking prick. Some of us are trying to better ourselves and might have a beer after this. So I only half a great but i've been trying to cut down on as much of it and i shouldn't put orange juice with it. there's too much fucking sugar in it one of us is gonna be a fat piece of shit for the rest of their lives and the other guy's mad forney <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know I, I, well i i don't i don't drink i don't drink i don't drink that much period but like when i drink it's usually a couple beers or you know some straight mezcal or oh you know like a man I don't drink. If you don't know that masculinity is directly proportionate to the amount of alcohol that you can ingest, how are you ever going to impress women? That's the only thing that women like. Young men out there, the only thing that women like, and they especially love it, is when you can drink a bunch of alcohol. So you should always go on dates and drink as much as possible to impress women. They enjoy it. They really they like love it. it. They really love it when you throw it all up on their shoes. Yes. Because then it gives them an excuse to buy new shoes. Women be shopping. We know. This is the way that it is. I don't make the rules. I just know how the world works. <laughs> uh, I already have to piss. I already have to piss, though. No, it's, uh, it's brutal. It's, it's news brutal. time, then, I guess, if you're going to piss. No, I was going to hold it. I was going to hold it like a dog that hasn't woken up its owner yet. You're gonna you're gonna hold it like I was when I was flying. Uh, flying. I'm gonna back. hold it like you hold men's penises <laughs> in my mouth. <laughs> no, nah, I'm gonna have this beer because I forgot I had it. Uh, oh yeah, speaking of uh, penises and mouths, motherfucking Transformers is now like got gay characters or something. Uh, Transformers, uh, more than meets the eye. Transformers, I need to meet a guy. <laughs> yeah, let me let me open this up because you sent me. You, you, I haven't read it yet. You sent it to me earlier today. Uh, Transformers: War for Cybertron Kingdom has a stunningly beautiful LGBT romance. Be haunt. I thought it said hauntingly beautiful. Well, maybe they changed it. Oh, did they change it? Hauntingly beautiful was so much better. 
Oh, they. Oh, wait, they did use it in the in the. Uh, that that was the title. This is the this is the first line in Netflix Transformers: War for Cybertron Kingdom. Unexpected alliances form, which leads to a hauntingly beautiful LGBT romance. Hauntingly beautiful. It is. It is hauntingly beautiful that a child's franchise is now just doing. I mean, it's weird if they were doing straight love stories and we're, they're robots. They're robots. Why are robots fucking? That's not. I've never wondered how the Transformers were made. I've never gone to DeviantArt to find out. Well, I mean, fucking Transformers was literally just invented to sell toys. The cartoons are just to fucking sell toys, and now it's here to sell something else. But I, but like so was I mean so was GI Joe so was like so many of those old uh, uh, cartoons and stuff they were just to sell toys I mean which is fine capitalism rules and I'm completely behind it uh, but you know what what are we doing also my understanding is that Transformers was actually was actually two separate uh, toy lines that had been like compressed together like they bought they cars they and robots them, like from two separate yeah they are. Yeah. Yeah, they licensed it from two separate Japanese toy companies. All right. Well, good. Again, in capitalism net, wins the day. But in, in Netflix's Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom, it's no surprise unexpected alliances form with the Autobots, Decepticons, Maximals, and Predacons hunting the Allspark in a way to revive Cybertron. This is all gibberish to me. However, yeah. some bonds are more shocking than others. And interestingly enough, this leads to a beautiful LGBT romance. In the season six episodes, Air Irazor, the Falcon Maximal, and Black Arachnia, the Spiderbot Predacon, have a lot of sexual tension between them, with the latter really pushing the envelope. It fits her femme fatale attitude as she keeps get everyone guessing which side she's on. She seems to be backing Megatron and his descendant as they plot to steal the Allspark, only to then work with Starstream against them. In the heat of all this, a captured Irazor becomes the target of Black Arachnia's affection, which at first seems playful, but as the show rolls on, it's clear it's something more. And also, Eyeraser seems to be interested every time I say that. My fucking jaw clenches. Well, um, let, me, let me stop you there. It, what are the odds that all of this is just some type of weird headcanon of just some egotistical, ridiculous blogger versus the like the real thing? Well, here's the problem. The people who like invented the concept of headcanon are now making the cartoons. That's true, but I mean, they're still out there. People just like making up their own things are like, you know, it, they, I'd have to see it myself to know whether or not it's like, oh, yeah, no, those if robots want to fly. If, if you're someone who is so far gone that you're making headcanons for Transformers and you're presumably an adult... You should go to the same place that Chris Chan is going to. Seriously. The Internet Hall of Fame? <laughs> I was thinking Lifetime Prison or uh, you know something worse. but Oh, I'm going to tell you this right now. The guy won't spend the rest of his life in prison. That's, uh, that's, no, Chris Chan's not going to prison for the rest of his life. That's, he, that's crazy. He'll get a year most. You don't think he'll be remanded to a psych ward? No, no, they're not going to do that. That's a really like hard thing to do. I don't think it. I don't think it's going to happen. No, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a. I'm not a law. I, I'm not a Virginia lawyer, but I'm. No, listen, the way the world is, he will be back out on the streets, living there and posting internets within a uh, posting videos on the internet with an Obama phone in a year. Yeah, I mean that's that's a depressing thing to think about. Like it's, it's hilarious to think of this being like the OJ trial of, of our generation. It's probably not going to go to trial. He's going to get a plea bargain. Yeah. Well, yeah. They're going to hit him with a bunch of charges and just have him plead guilty to one of them. What if he defended himself? That would be the best possible outcome if he fucking defended himself. Oh, that well, that well, that well, that would definitely guarantee a guilty plea on everything. Yeah, but that would rule. Like, Dude, the court, yeah, it would. The court transcripts would be incredible. I, Your Honor, I am stand here fals falsely accused. I love my mother. <laughs> it, would, it would fucking rule, dude. Like, I, I was just massaging to increase the blood flow to her groin. 
and some terrible haters and trolls have said slander against so me. Nefarious, the nefarious trollios have said things. Mm. I would like to kill them. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to have to ask the defendant to uh, please refrain from uh, being a fucking threats. weirdo. <laughs> no, that would, that would rule. I mean, also, the, the second, I know we're getting off track here, but like, you know, like we were talking about, it'd be great if like the whole uh, trans community picks up on, you know, the uh, misgender dead. I think I think a lot of the I think a lot of them still are. It's like you know, there's fucking trannies on Twitter going like, you need to respect her pronouns. It doesn't matter what she's done. Look, okay, look, I don't want to be the guy who's like not all trannies. Like, I don't think Chris Chan qualifies as a tranny. He's what we used to call a transvestite. I, yeah, I you know He's someone I, who just. There, there's only one reason he decided that he was a she. He he did this for one reason only. He thought it'd be easier to creep on girls. Yeah. Which I don't know why that would work, but and he also <laughs> even before that happened, he demonstrated a de like a transvestite fetish. Like if you want watching the Christian Comprehensive History series, as as far back as 2008, he was filming. He was pho photographing himself wearing his mom's underwear. Well, I mean, who hasn't? You know, photograph themselves wearing Barb's underwear. Mm. You know, uh, uh, yeah, he's <sighs> he's severely mentally ill, and it, uh, it's but, it's a bad but story, he, but it fucking rules. I'm sorry, the it's, is, it's hilarious. The thing is, even if he even if he skates or like gets a slap on the wrist, like you know, he's probably I I would hope he's not allowed to live with his mother ever again. No, or, well, she's dude, she's gonna die. I mean, she's real old, so. He's almost certainly going to lose the house because yeah. he's – the two of them are getting sued left and right for unpaid credit card debt, and they haven't paid off the mortgage on that house. So, like, as soon as she dies, like, that thing is going to be repoed. Uh, is, it's going to be repoed, and uh, it's – the house is probably so disgusting that BlackRock probably won't even want it. Well, isn't this – think of this. Isn't that another reason for uh, Trentifa? You know, to get involved and be like, yeah, all these evil, uh, you know, they should be able to live there rent free. These credit card companies, all of that. Is that more of a re like if people uh, if people who are way smarter than me are not laying the bait right now for the left to take the Christian up as a cause. Then this is a huge missed opportunity because this someone, would be the someone, someone funniest thing to ever to happen. Someone has to be doing it. Like, there are so many autistic people following Christian. I mean, we, within like a twelve hours of him, you know, getting that, uh, you know, that protective order, we knew what motel in Richmond he was staying at. Someone yeah. stole his fucking license plate. Yes, which I think is like a really big crime. So I can't be in support of that, no matter how hilarious it is. They got uh, him. You know, trolls got him banned from Patreon yesterday. Or did Patreon just? Right, I mean, people have been banned for way less than. Well, that. I it's you, you fucking know that they had a million weens just be like, hey, yeah, one of your this guy, this guy got arrested for raping his mom. Yeah, I watched I watched a video of like a guy who was like prank calling the calling receptionist the at the motel, and she sounded so fucking exhausted because that was probably like the hundredth call she dealt with on her shift. The internet is... She probably just lied and said the police were coming just to get the guy to go away. Hey, can you imagine how shitty your job is? You're like, oh, good. It's like fucking two in the morning. I got to work this. It's usually easy. That's why I took it's a, this and it's, and it's a roach motel, so it's yeah. probably just frequented by drug addicts and hookers. You know, the, the best people in our society. And, you know, I, listen, I'm not going to stand here while you talk poorly about drug addicts and sex workers, Matt. All right. These are the best our society has to offer. Of course, when I say that, kind of sounds true. That might be the best our society has to offer now. Um, I made myself sad. Shit. But that must still suck. You take that thing because you think you can hang around, you know, dick around on your phone, 2 a.m. shift. It's not a big deal. And then you're bombarded with calls over and over of like something you don't understand. Uh, so you have to call the cops and they're like, yeah, I don't, we've been getting calls too. 
I don't really get this whole thing. More people are going to go and look into this. And they're going to see what the internet used to be like. And, uh, oh, it's just going to be just god awful, really. I mean, Chris, the, the Chris, motherfucker's in Newsweek now. He's in Newsweek. I never thought I'd see Newsweek say the word Sonaju. But this is where we are now. He wasn't just in Newsweek. He was also in, I think it was The Sun. The Sun. Yeah. I mean, this is like, look, all journalists are pieces of shit. But I never once thought I'd see Newsweek imagine say being, you. Imagine being the fact checker who had to look through that. Oh, they, what, you think they have fact checkers? What year is this? We got rid of fact checkers. Now we have <laughs> fact checkers. All right. Those are completely different people. Imagine the editor who had to look at that pile of gibberish. Facebook, uh, Facebook fucking fact checked false the CDC the other day by their algorithm. Nice. Yeah, real funny stuff. But just a just a nightmare. Just a whole. I mean, like every day, you know, every day is worse than the last one, and the next day will be worse than today. Speak so, for yourself. My life is going great. It's not, Matt. You have just chose not to pay attention to it. Well, you know, it's worse. Mm, doesn't it? Doesn't Matt? I've hired Hitman to come by. Agent Forty Seven is going to come by. Although, crap, I'm not smart enough to remember how to say Forty Seven in Spanish. Uh, <laughs> Cuatro Siete? Is that it? I think. Agent, Agent, Qua you live in Mexico. You should know that. I, God damn. I've never You're a piece of shit. I'm I like, my whole thing is like, hey, if you come to America, you better speak the fucking language. <laughs> Meanwhile, my co host is like, I'm going to go to Mexico and I don't fucking speak Spanish. You're a dick. <laughs> anyway, Agent Cuatro, uh, Agent Cuatro Cietro, uh, I think, is coming for you. He's coming for you. And he's going to be like, you know, he's got a barcode on his back. He's got a QR code instead of a barcode on the back. Got an yeah, ad a, for Coke. He's a he's a he's a pale white guy walking down a suit and no no I was no I was thinking he was like a really short uh, Mexican man with like a real dark Mexican complexion and face with a mustache and then like he's got a mariachi outfit and he's like lo siento señor your time has come and then he just offs you with his with his uh, suppressed uh, pistol. <laughs> That guy rules. The guy that I just made up in my head is the best guy. There's got to be a mod I can get for Hitman that I can turn him into a mariachi man. Los, los Assassinino. Did you Google it? No. So you made it up? Yes, I did. Yeah, I don't think it's Assassinino. I once I once got in trouble in Spanish class for using the word beardo because I couldn't remember Spanish for beard. It <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, no Spanglish, the teacher said. Well, I believe like that's what they speak in Mexico. Uh you, you were close. It is uh as, uh asesino. Or <laughs> asesina, if it's feminine, you know. So yeah, pretty close. Pretty See, close. I know I speak Spanish. You don't. You'd guess it's Spanish. I can guess so. It's at Espanol Tuo. As well, Yana. Pendejo. I was just said the N word out of you out of a natural fucking reaction to say things when I'm insulted. <laughs> God damn. All right. Let's get back to the, what happened with Transformers. Uh,. Uh, in the heat of all this, a captured eye razor becomes the target of Black Arachnia's affection, which at first seems playful, but as the show rolls on, it's clear to something more, and also eye razor seems to be interested. A major sign comes when Megatron's nemesis ship tries to blow up the Autobots' arc so they can't take the AllSpark away from him. With their shields being weakened, Black Arachnia makes it clear that if they get her on the vessel, she'll disable the weapons. You know, the whole show, I, I think I figured out the problem with this, with this article. It's this retarded? Yeah, obviously. But from a structural standpoint, it all rests on you knowing what the all spark is. What is the all spark? Give me some definitions. 
Well, I think probably to be fair, like anybody that's going to read any of that shit is either going to know about the show or is outraged at the fact that there's gay characters now in Transformers. So it's kind of not it, like it's written for people that are fans of Transformers and are happy about the gay stuff. Because like the rest of us are going to be sit there going like, I don't know what any of this shit is. Why? Are, I don't even know this is geared toward children at this point. Do kids like Transformers? This might just be all adults. And if that's the case, if they want to make gay robots, go ahead. It's for adults. I don't give a shit. But if it's for it, kids, I'm not in favor it, of it. But prob- gay robots prob- for men, like, I don't give a shit. It probably is for adults. Then it's said, then I, yeah, then I don't give a shit. People can write gay stories about gay robots for adults all they fucking want. I don't, you know, whatever you want to do. It's weird, but that's fine. Any robot sex is strange to me. Any of it. Like, do they fuck as cars or do they fuck as like, Men, like, do they do they have fluids? Does like does like when the male one does it? Does he does he come oil? Yeah, I yeah exactly. Like I've got a ton of questions, but you know it's not. Can for female me. robots get pregnant? Do they like give birth to little baby robots? Do they yeah. have to use protection like a like a giant fucking tarp as a condom? Like yeah, are they are they squirting out little RC cars? You know that you know I don't know anything about Transformers. I, I, I really don't, other than, you know, it's uh, it's the Decepticons and who are the other guys? They're the, the Megabots, something like that. I don't know anything about it. It was never my thing. I had Transformers toys that I got in a McDonald's thing. That's about the extent of Transformers. The, for Autobots. Optimus, the Autobots. Autobots. No, because, oh, yeah, GoBots was the ripoff. So, yeah, the Autobots versus the Decepticons. I know about Optimus Prime. And I know about Jazz because he was the black Transformer because it was a joke in 30 Rock. And I know about Starscream because the DJ Sid, uh, Sid Wilson from Slipknot, his solo project is DJ Starscream. Outside of that, I cannot name any, any fucking Transformers. I couldn't tell you what any of the Transformers look like besides Optimus Prime or the Decepticon guy. I remember he's like a, a like he's like a, like a dark version of, of Optimus Prime. And Optimus Prime is a semi truck. I know that. Outside of that, couldn't tell you. Yeah, I mean it's like a fucking E thing. Like and, and both right. of us are way too young for that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. But now I mean I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean it's it's sad the fact that they're marketing Transformers cartoons to like 50 year old Gen Xers, but is it though? I mean, is it like Think about it like a band that you like, you know, like Broken Social Scene is one of my favorite bands. If they ever make more music, I'm going to go and buy the album. Like that's I always like their stuff and they're, you know, they're but they're older. Well, I, I like I like Broken Social Scene, too, but like that's different because they're a band and they're still together. It's not something it's not something that's explicitly targeted at kids that's now being targeted at adults. Uh, well, I don't know. I bought the I bought uh, for my, my switch, uh, which Send me your friend code things. Uh, I got a I got a switch that I very much enjoy uh, playing. I got uh, the Super Mario 3D All Stars uh, game, and it's got Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, which I I fucking hate that game. I, honestly, I'd never played it until now. It's awful. And then I played a little of Mario Odyssey, and that's pretty fun too. I'm still buying Mario games. Is that much different? I mean, I'm not buying Mario Funko Pops, but. You know, it, like if a show came on, I'm trying to think. If uh, I, I think it would, I think I, I think it's a little odd, but I think it would get weird if, like, if if Mario and Luigi had a gay relationship. No, I think it would be fucking. I would buy that game in a second. I would buy that game in a second. If Nint- you're telling me if Nintendo, if Nintendo released a game where Mario and Luigi were having an incestual gay relationship. You wouldn't buy that official Nintendo incest gay porn Mario game. In a second, I would buy that. Because that's like a collector's item. That's the a, a huge fucking company that that is what would kill that company. I would buy that in a second. They'd never release a console again. That would fucking rule. Just to watch a whole company go down in flames over woke bullshit? Yeah. 
Because that's a bridge too far. It wouldn't work out. Yeah, I would I would not buy it. I don't think I'd I play need that to see game. <laughs> If it's official Nintendo release, I would buy it in a second. It'd be like, this is the last game Nintendo ever made. <laughs> it would be incredible. There's no way I wouldn't fucking play that. I don't know. It just seems it just seems weird to me. The whole yeah. thing. Yeah, Mar yeah. Or the Transformers thing. Yeah, that is. I mean, it's a little weird. I kind of think that there's more than meets the eye uh, with that article there. I think that it's it's probably a little. Actually, going back to like the mechanics of like how robot sex would work. I mean, this is an LGBT romance suite. I have to remember, so it's two female Are they doing robots. What? Uh, two female robots tripping, I guess, or is that what it's called? Scissoring? I think so. Yeah. So, oh, scissor. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, that, that implies, the, all of this implies the existence of robot pussies and dicks and butts. <laughs> Which is like, I never once, I, I never saw Optimus Prime and was like, wonder how big his dick is. Like, it's never, because that means that they're wearing robot clothes when they transform. There's a lot. There's a lot that that's why I think that this has got to be in this dude's head. Yeah. There's I mean, no fucking way. Have you ever seen that? Have you seen that Saturday night live skip by Robert Smigel, Robert Smigel, the uh, anatomicals? No. Oh, that's hilarious. It's basically, it's basically a parody of Yogi bear, but like all of the, of the animal characters have accurate genitalia. Okay. That rules. <laughs> it's actually pretty funny. That fucking rules. I have to piss like a racehorse and make myself a drink. So it's time for Terror House News. I made it. I made it. I held it for 20 minutes. I feel good. Okay, cool. Um, we've had to delay it once again, but it will be out confirmed. August 13th, Rhythm and Mufkus by Mather Schneider. Collection of poems about life in Mexico, life of the working class, misery, comedy, um, fantastic. Uh, Mather is the author of Six to Six, which we published last year, and which a lot of you seem to like, if the sales uh, sales uh, are any indication. It's a very um, it's a very great book. You should buy that as well, and you should buy Rhythm and Mucus when it comes out on August thirteenth. That is next Friday. We'll be running a interview with Mather. Uh, very, very soon. Uh, stay tuned for that. Later this month, we will also be publishing Luminaria by K.H. Mezik, a uh, blend of fantasy, romance, crime, interesting stuff. It's a, set in the 1980s. Um, it's about a writer and his famous book and a bunch of women who get involved with him and end up with their lives ruined and end up plotting revenge. Uh, very interesting stuff. We actually serialized it on the site earlier. Uh, this year, Luminaria by K.H. Mezik. That will be out August 26th. Um, so stay tuned for those. Stay tuned for those uh, right here on uh, Terror House Press. Um, damn it, where's Brian? Brian, get back here. Your order is ready. He can't hear me. Why am I yelling at him? But uh, yeah, let's let's look at let's look at this. Um, oh my god! So this this cartoon not only has implied LGBT romance, but an implied sexy. Because right now they talk about liking it rough, sassy chemistry being off the hook. Oh god! My hero. This is this is painful. This is this is painful. It was funny. Now it's fucking painful. Uh, oh, this is streaming now on Netflix. I don't want to fuck it. This fucking hurts. Why does everything have to be gay or whatever? Why why do people have to be man children? Why does the world have to be so fucked up? Why does Chris Chan exist? Why are vaccine passports a thing? What's wrong with the fucking what's wrong with the fucking planet? Oh good, he's back. He's fucking back. Why are you so bad at broadcasting? Why can't Me? you fuck it? Yeah, why can't you just fucking exist for like two minutes while I'm gone? I did. 
Uh, you ran out of things to say. You ran out of things. I heard you. Erica's watching the live stream in the living room, and I heard Matt Forney calling out, Oh, Bryden, Bryden, please, Bryden, come well, back. Well, ordin ordinarily, you're much faster at this. Ordinarily, it's the timing is perfect. I get done with the news just as you get back in the seat. I tell Yeah, because that's a P. All right? But I told you I needed to make a drink as well. You've got to adjust as a professional to 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 bend to my <laughs> timing. I'm a professional. I have to adjust as a, I have to, I have to adjust as a, I have to adjust as a professional to your professional need to urinate. Yes, and my need to drink as well. And because I usually drink beers, but I quit drinking beers except for that last beer and then a few other beers. You gotta you gotta <laughs> learn. You gonna learn today, boy. You gotta learn. Don't want to leave you out here in the cold because apparently you're out here shivering, shivering with dead air. Well, I also haven't had a cigarette in two hours, so that might have something to do with it. Oh, smoke one with your butt. No, no. You want to do it? Uh, the you you got tired of that? You want to do it rare style and actually use your mouth this time? <laughs> How would that would that even be possible? I mean, what, but I mean, smoke with your butt? No. <laughs> I'm trying to be possible. I'm Can trying... you breathe through your ass? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a fucking question is that? No, it's not possible. Well, it's like booty bumping exists, you know, alcohol enemas exist. Right. That's because of the lining, uh, allow, uh, lining of your anus allows you to absorb things. You can't, I guess, you can't <laughs> suck air through a vacuum that's required to suck air with a cigarette. Through now, you can't smoke through your ass. <laughs> You're supposed to be the smart one. <laughs> I'm now convinced there's two retards on the show that you can't <laughs> smoke through your ass. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> like how would I mean you can't. Well, no, see, no, uh toilet goes that he saw a chick uh blowing smoke out of her hoo-ha. That <clears throat> is possible. Probably not with a cigarette. But well, you probably this guy has never seen a candle show or a ping pong show. Right. So yeah, that that's probably it seems more time we can do amazing things with their vaginas. I wouldn't say amazing. That I've, that I've heard. Because you've never seen one before. But I, a vagina, that is. But it's, I, you know, I don't know. I would be, if somebody was like, this lady can smoke a cigarette with a vagina, I still wouldn't believe it. But I'd be more inclined to think that it was possible than with your butt. You can't, you know, I think they may breathe through their vaginas. I don't know. I have no idea, but I don't think that they, I, I don't think you could, you could ever smoke with your butt. I don't think it's going to happen. You should try it though. You should spend hours trying it. Just <laughs> rolled on your back like a weird turtle. Like, I think, I think it would be a way to, a good way to set yourself on fire. That's also fine. That sounds like it would be a real fun story for me to hear from you. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's anything that's – I'm sure you'll be fine. Just don't hurt anybody else. But, yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to – I don't think anybody can smoke through their butt. I'm also not going to look online for it because I'm sure there are videos of, like, you know, in shocking internet video, van, video man smokes through his anus. Like, I don't well, – like, I I'd mean, watch it. If I saw it, I'd watch it. God damn. Like, if somebody was like, here, this is a guy smoking out of his asshole – I'm clicking the video. I'm clicking it. I would do it. I'd be like, fuck, he's smoking with his butt all? Like, I would do it. I'm from the old internet, all right? And you're like, oh, shit, I don't want to well, watch it. Well, I mean, I once, I once watched a video of a man put a firecracker between his butt cheeks and light it. So. Yeah, yeah, he got all kinds of messed up. He was he had to go, yeah, he got all kinds of burns. That was a dumbass idea. Are we, are we, are we thinking the same guy? Because there was a Darwin Award winner who did the same thing, but it wasn't filmed. Right, he blew his balls off. No, I, I'm, I'm thinking now, this of Roman guy, this, Candles. This, this, I'm thinking yeah, of Roman this, Candles. Yeah, because yeah, this I, and I saw it when I was a kid. This guy, this guy was this guy was fine. I mean, he was you know he got a fine you know you know 
Oh my God, I just lit something on fire in my ass, but he didn't seem to have any serious injuries. Now, the guy that I'm thinking of, and not Roman Candle, it was the one where it's got like the st- bottle rockets. Yeah, the guy, bottle rockets. Yeah, a guy put a bottle rocket in his fucking butt cheeks. They lit it, and he, was, he had to go to the hospital because he was all burnt the fuck up. Then the firecracker guy blew his balls off. Uh, yeah, people do dumb shit. Like, and then I, I'll like make fun of those people and then turn around and do dumb shit, you know? So, I mean, you, you, no, you haven't. The dumb, you, you haven't put a firecracker in your ass. So. No, no, not yet. I mean, <laughs> there's always tomorrow, but I have no plans. It's, and then, yeah, the jar squatter, that guy who broke a mason jar off in his butthole and then decided to upload it to the internet still. I The internet he was, is... A, he was trying to imitate the goatsy guy? I don't know what he was doing, man, but it was really brutal. Uh, Speaking of the goatsy guy, no one's heard of him for years. Heard from him for years, which is... Uh, I wonder if he's okay. Does it matter? I don't know. I mean, he's a... We're talking about, like, artifacts of, like, the old internet here. Christian, fucking troll face. Goatsy is, like, like legendary. Mm. Well, the, guy, I mean, the guy... The guy who was featured in that meme, like, uploaded dozens of, like, naked pictures and videos of himself to, like, a bunch of porn accounts every week until, like, four years ago when he just abruptly stopped. Oh, uh, maybe he's probably dead. I mean, people die. I mean that's that, that is a tragedy. There was a there was a joke story that went around years ago about how he had died after trying to put a volleyball up his ass. <laughs> okay, that's not true. That can't be true. <laughs> that can't be true, dude. Uh, I you know I don't know I don't know. I mean, like Chocolate Rain is alive and well. You know we know that, but like none of the. The Gen Z people are going to know about that one, and that's a tame one. Chocolate Rain, like that was, that's a tame one. Chocolate, um, Chocolate Rain was boring. Just a song about racism. What I was it really? I never. Well, that's Tay Zonday. That's what he said it was about. Yeah, Tay Zonday. I'm pretty sure is a liar. Uh, but I don't know what the hell it was. Uh, but that was he, a safe one. You he's, know. Got, he, he's got a hell of a voice, though. I'll give him that. He's a real good narrator. Well, yeah, he should be doing the radio instead of us. We should just send him a transcript of the things that we do and just pay him to do it. I mean, he's probably, you know, looking for work. He's like, oh, I was a meme when I was 14. You know, now not so much. Of course, we're probably going to find out Chocolate Rain, Tay Zonday, raped his mother. So the way things are going now, I think it's all, that's what singularity really is. Like, you know how the Wojaks are just the goddamn same thing as the goddamn Rage comics? Yeah. It's going to be the same fucking thing. I mean, they came up with that new mushroom meme, which weirds me out. I don't know. I've seen it. It just looks like a drawing. It doesn't really bother me. Well, I mean, uh, you know, mushrooms have weird energy. Plus, I think the people were doing it just as an excuse to draw dicks on everything. They have weird energy. Are you a woman? What are you talking about? Mushrooms are weird, Bryden. Yeah, they look like dicks. They're weird. They come from caves. They're they represent they darkness. They don't. They half they of don't. them kill you. Maybe, but you know, there's some of them that people put on pizza, and other ones are like <laughs> really fun. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Just maybe have a, have a tiny bit of knowledge of uh, uh, mycology, and then you're fine. You know. I'm just saying, nobody, th- nobody, when people are f- talking about the beautiful creations of nature, mushrooms are not on that fucking list. Mushrooms are mushrooms like something are on, weird. Mushrooms are on my list. I think it's crazy, dude. They like, all mushrooms are like connected together under these fucking roots and shit like that. And like, if you stomp on them, they just build more. Like, it's, it's crazy. Well, you're fucking weird, Bryden. I guess, but no, you're weird. Like, no, mushrooms are like really weird fungi things. Like, they're, they're crazy. Like they're really, really weird, because like, uh, like moss and mold and shit is like in that same thing where they just like build these crazy, uh, you know, deep systems into whatever they're in. It's 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 really cool. That's why you can't scrape mold off a of toast. Don't eat that. Uh, don't eat that bread with the the mold off of it. There's they've got vines all through even the bag of bread. You know they may have them. 
And you're probably going to be fine, but you may not be, depending on the mold. Right. See, that's why I don't like them. Like, you're just giving me reasons to not like mushrooms. They're fucking weird. Why is it weird that something wants to, you know, be like, to, wants to survive? It's the world of life, baby. I like I like things that I can see that are above ground. Trees, fucking bushes, beautiful fruits, apples falling from the tree, peaches, lettuce. I don't like shits in the ground. Peaches and lettuce. So you don't like potatoes? Trees have pretty intricate root systems as well. Yeah, but you can see trees. Trees are not... Nobody thinks trees are weird. You can see a mushroom, too. You see a little, you know, weird, you know, dick-looking thing growing out, you know, yeah. giving all those spores, got that shit underneath it that's all, like, that, that weird You fucking... don't know how plants work. Yes, I do. <laughs> you don't. And the mushroom's not a plant. It's not. It's a fun guy. Yeah. It's a fun guy. <laughs> it's a... It... Mushrooms, I, no, they're neat. They're just as neat as anything else. I'm not a particular fan of like, you know, um, uh, you know, like Black Forest or uh, Portobello's or anything like that. Uh, like the, you know, mushrooms that you eat for food. Uh, but I still think they're fucking interesting. And, you know, it's been years and years and years and years and years, um, for probably a decade or more uh, since I've done psychedelic mushrooms. But fucking respect goes out to psilocybin dude like that's some serious shit that'll fuck you up it's uh it rules <laughs> like so yeah i don't know you're 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 just no you're wrong you're against god and you're wrong against god you're, you're against with, god you're communicating with demons via mushroom mushrooms and i'm the one who's against i'm not god. communicating with anybody i'm usually just seeing the stuff change colors and going <laughs> that is weird and then a lot of anxiety and that's why i quit doing mushrooms i've been on shrooms brian you can't you can't fool me with this one i when i was on shrooms i was contacted by what i thought was god appearing in the guise of a giant jellyfish okay and it was probably you were just high on drugs well yeah so like you're gonna say that the 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 people that are tweaking out there on meth, uh, uh, they're you know seeing demons, or do you think that they're just sleep deprived and I don't know, meth crazy, doesn't crazy meth, idea meth, on drugs. Meth's not a hallucinogen. Great hallucinogens just alter your goddamn brain chemistry. That's all they do. You're not communicating with God or demons or anything like that. It's just fucking up your brain. Have you ever heard of the machine elves? Yeah, it's just fucking up your brain. It fucks up your brain in a certain way in which these everyone, are the things and that yet people everyone, think. Every, everyone who, and yet everyone who does them has the exact same experiences. One, not everyone has the exact same experiences by far. And two, yeah, that's what that chemical does to your brain as a human being. It's not that far-fetched to think that we are all similar enough when these certain pipelines are opened up that we have similar experiences, just like we can all agree on the color blue. Or when we snort Coke, we go, I'm a fucking prick now. That's that's <laughs> it's the same thing. It's just what it does to you, and it's fun. And what makes psychedelics fun is not that it's real or it's another dimension or anything like that, although idiots think often that it is. It's that it makes you feel more humble it's an ego destroying uh it, like psilocybin it, and and my favorite is lsd uh, and i've never done dmt but you know it's an ego destroying thing all right that's that's what it is it just make it opens up weird different pathways affects people's brains and we all have you know the same pathways uh in our brains and all of that and when affected with the chemicals that it releases and the chemicals that we put into our body makes us react in a certain way. That's why nobody has ever done a line of Coke and passed the fuck out unless they were dead. All right. That's just the way that it is. Of course. It, it, like, I, are, are people, are people freaking out about like, Hey, things change colors when people do LSD things change colors or, or look like they're breathing or see fractal patterns. So we're blaming that on demons now, or are we just going like, yep, that's what happens when you ingest this chemical. Nobody has ever drank an entire bottle of Jack and been like, I'm very good at speaking right now. They've thought they are, but we all get confidence when we drink, but we slur our words. This is why, why people take psychedelics and put them into a different category is insane. It's insane. It's a chemical. It's a drug. It, this is what it does to people. So it's not unnatural that 
these are the common symptoms of it. I first off, I did once snore a lot of coke and then fall asleep. So you're wrong. Two, okay, listen, that coke was shit, and you were probably tired. How long were you awake, and were you drunk? I was 36 hours. There you go, buddy. You tried to leave that out of the story. What are you reporting for the fucking New York Times now? <laughs> Don't fucking sit here and bullshit me. Come on. You know I'm right. All right? It's it's more fun to believe in demons. But this is just chemicals reacting in our brains that open the same pathways. So, of course, it's a weird phenomenon. I think there should be studies on it. Why do people see the machine elves? I'd like to know. You know, but it's just a thing that happens. It's a thing that happens. Heroin makes you sleepy and itchy. DMT makes you see little people you think are talking to you. That's just what happens when you put these chemicals in into your body. That's just what happens. Salvia makes you jump out of windows. There was the funniest thing was that guy who jumped out of a window. I never got high from salvia. I'm pretty sure we talked about it on the show before, but I tried it every which way, doing I, bong I, hits. Every I, I never got anything from it. I, 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 in order to get high from salvia, I had to brew a tea out of it and then take it subdermally, which is disgusting, by the way. It tastes like mud. What does subdermally mean? I got it in your tongue. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I never tried that. I didn't know that was a thing. But I tried smoking it every which way. I mean, I got like the 32X, all of that. I, I would fucking bowl after bowl after bowl after bowl I, out of the bong. And I it just it never, I, I never got high from it. <sighs> so, I don't know. Uh... It, it worked for me when I took it subdermally. Like, you know, my, my computer screen turned into a smiley face, um, then a frowny face, and then I accused my friend of trying to light my couch on fire. Well, I was trying to light your couch on fire, though. It wasn't you. It was, uh, it was another friend of mine. He was just using his phone. <laughs> I mean, that sounds about right. But I don't know. I mean, it seems fun. I Like, I've watched my friends get high on it and, like, you know, back in the day, this was I was like 18 when Salvia was a thing you could buy at the smoke shop. But yeah, it never worked for me. And I, I always thought that was a shame. Uh, but yeah, I don't I don't I, I don't uh, I don't entertain these stupid psychedelics or demons bullshit or that mushrooms are somehow like, give me a fucking break. Act like a goddamn adult for a minute. You know, it's, you know, it's fucking fantasy. It's ridiculous. It's, it's as dumb as gay transformers. <sighs> Makes me mad. You're, those are the demons talking. It's, you're a demon talking. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, to kind of circle back to the original topic of this podcast, I mean, I mean, if you could use the word demon to describe someone, I think it would describe Chris Chan pretty adequate, adequately. Um, we have a guy who's so mentally warped that he raped his own mother, tried man. to justify it, and then hide it from people. Did he hide it from people, though? It seems like he was pretty open about it. Well, I mean, uh, there's the, I mean, there's the, you know, he sent that message to Noel, where he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm dating a much older lady." I mean, there were hints seated about it throughout it, but like, well, that's know. that that's autism, narcissism, and like years of being like on the internet, and not just like you and me on the internet. Like we've had bad things said about us, written about us, whatever. You, you more so, um, but, but like nobody to this extent. I mean, I think it's just like a weird, there was no way this is ever going to go good. I mean, it's, I don't know, but like demon, I mean, like a demon is, uh, you know, fucking Ted Bundy or, um, you know, uh, uh, well, you, Dahmer. You, well, you, you know. don't, you don't think Christian would be doing shit like that if he had the ability to. Right. But he doesn't I mean, have the ability to. Oh, I don't think it necessarily stems from ability here. We're talking about like desire. Christian would be hurting way more people if he could get away with it. Maybe. I mean, we don't know that for sure, and I'm not going to throw that in somebody's face, but maybe. You know, I mean, I can only deal with like what we know, and uh, I mean, it's not good. It's not good. None of it's good. But I think demons a little extreme. Uh, you know. 
But I mean, I also like calling people. I call every woman a demon anyway. So it's like, you know, the word means nothing to me. But if you're looking for like, oh, what is demon possessed? Then like half the fucking world. If that's the, the way you want to view it, which plenty of people I'm, do. Plenty of my friends I'm, do. I'm fine with that. I'm that's fine, fine with that. Uh, yeah, then that's fine. We can call him a demon. I think so. He's not a good person. I know that. Not a good person. Not a sane person. Shouldn't be, you know, around people at all. Like, proved that a long time ago. For whatever reason, still allowed to walk around. Seems like a failure of society. Uh, but, you know, because I don't know what type of world makes that type of guy. But it's also not my fucking problem. I'm just here to watch it be goddamn funny as shit. Um, it's not my problem. I'm not going any. I'm not going to Virginia though. I know that. So, well, Virginia sucks. Yeah, it's not a place. It's not a great place. Speaking of which, um, let's get to the um, let's get to the uh, stream lab steps because we actually have a tip. Someone sent us money. This is. I thought good. you would talk about Cuomo. Mm, what about? Him? Well, you know, I mean, they've got the uh, uh, now they're saying we're going to do. Vaccine oh, pep- right. I just remember that because Tish and, at a press conference. Yes. And uh, yeah, they're 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 saying they're doing the uh, <laughs> vaccine passports and they decided he has been not great with women. And de Blasio has said that he should resign. A lot oh. of Cuomo things have happened, but that's fine. Let's get to the two dollars. Um, well, we can talk about this. I mean, all this happened like today, yeah, today. Wow, today they, they must really want his fucking ass gone. They've wanted him gone for a while. All the failures of the COVID era are gonna get cleaned out, besides yeah, but Fauci. yeah, but like you know, it's you know, there were all the harassment stuff a while back, but then it just kind of stopped. He didn't fucking harass anybody, dude. Everything they brought forward is fucking bullshit. Like, I, yeah, like, I mean, I, I mean, you know, I, obviously it's bullshit. Oh, he's a faggot. And I don't want to like, I don't like him, but I don't live in fucking New York. I don't care. You know, but yeah, he didn't, he didn't sexually harass. Yeah, they're, doing the same shit. They're, they're doing the same shit they did to Eric Schneiderman. Schneiderman was the, uh, AG before, uh, uh, Tish James became AG. Uh, and he, uh, he was forced to resign because, uh, some activist came forward. Like he was dating some Sri Lankan woman. And he was like, oh, he was abusive to me. He called me his little brown slave. Well, that's... I guarantee you she came a little every time he said that. I call Erica that, and she's lily white. (laughs) I didn't say she liked it, but... uh, Yeah, she resigned. Tish James got elected AG, and she's clearly doing this just so that she can get Cuomo out and she can become governor. Yeah, which... And that's when hell will really begin. Everyone who thought Cuomo was a bad governor, just wait until you've got this sassy black bitch in charge. That rules. I want that. I want that to happen so bad. I don't live there. I live the opposite of New York. This rules. I mean, it'll be funny. You know? I mean, I just don't think people in New York. That's the only thing that matters. The only thing that matters is, is it fucking funny? All right? In 2016, wasn't the best reason to vote for Trump because it was fucking funny? Of course. You, like, look, you do what's funniest. Society's crumbling around us. All right. All of us in society is crumbling around us from, from the U.S. to all over Europe. Everything is crumbling. So guess what? Just do what is funniest. What is going to be the funniest thing? Be funny. Just just let funny things happen. We're all going to die eventually anyway. Might as well do the funniest goddamn thing. Push it along. Push it along and go, oh, this rules. This is great to see. Because eventually normal people are going to go, well, I don't like this. And by that time, you're too goddamn irony poisoned that you're like, what are you talking about? This is great. We elected a hedgehog as the president. This rules. Wait, are like, you saying that are you saying that Christian could become president? Yes. Please, God, yes, run for Senate. That would fucking rule. Why not? Hi, honest to God, Christian would be better than Maxine Waters in the house. Absolutely. Well, people forget we just more let Maxine on the Waters. Issues, you can say that much, dude. We just let Maxine Waters run around and just be a be a representative, and she's been there forever. Nancy Pelosi is also insane. This rules. It rules. It's the best damn shit in the world. It's not good to live in, but you were never gonna have a life anyway, buddy. You just rent your goddamn house from BlackRock, 
and that'll be the way that it is. Who cares? What is the funniest outcome? The funniest outcome is we get a pig elected as the governor of fucking any state. They've done it in towns before. Let's make it. Let's make a pig governor. Florida or California is coming up here. Newsom's gone. Newsom is not going to make it through this. Yeah, he will. The best choices are Larry Elder, the radio show host, who I like, or a tranny. I'm. I, I don't even know what's going on on the Democrat side. There's got to be a pig over there, or a sheep, or a dog, or anything, any of that, or a kid. What There's if we a made a 14 year old kid the governor of California? There isn't going to be a pig. They passed the law like against pork cruelty, which is going to eliminate 96% of the pork supply in the state. So no more bacon for you hipsters. You know what? Um, as a guy who's really against animal cruelty, I like that. But as a libertarian, I think that's bullshit. And libertarianism comes before animal rights. Sorry, animals. I, I like freedoms more than I like you. But I think you should eat less meat and animal products in general. Newsom's and, and by the way, Newsom's going to get, you know, he's going to survive the recall. No, you think so? California is so heavily democratic. They now. don't like him though. And he keeps getting boned. The Democrats going to put in another. I don't think Larry Elder is going to win. I don't think that Bruce Jenner is going to win, but I do think they're going to get a new Democrat instead. They, Gavin doesn't survive the recall, dude. He's the he's he's the only one they have. There's no other high profile Democrat running. They're gonna have to figure the highest out. the highest profile Democrat running is a guy who does YouTube videos on how to be a better landlord. That rules. That guy sounds great. Chad Lords are the best. But yeah, that I don't know. I don't see him. I don't see him winning it. But maybe he does. Maybe he does survive the recall. We'll see. They're just, I mean, dude, those lockdowns are so fucking unpopular. Like, I, it's its so fucking unpopular. Governors are going to start caring about this stuff a little bit more. Because we had only had a few fringe crazy ones around the country for a while. And it was usually in Democrat places. But, like, dude, I don't think people like Newsom over there. People haven't liked him for, for years and years. But this really sealed it. Uh, he's got so much bad press. They've got to get, it's going to be a Democrat. We don't live in a democracy anymore. What the people think doesn't matter. I get that. There's but... going to be a nationwide lockdown by November enforced no. by the military. No, no. Oh God, no, that won't happen. That's insane. That's, <laughs> that's absolutely insane. That won't happen. <laughs> I mean, look at what's happening now. They're all, they're all, they're already prepping what? people for it. Bringing back masks. Okay. Vax passport. I don't wear a mask. They're, they're, you know, they're demonizing the unvaccinated by blaming right. them. Right, that's, the, the that's, the that's, the, that's the media. Like, normal people don't feel that way. And normal, what normal people think doesn't matter. They're we don't not live in a democracy, to... Bryden. Hey, guess what? Guy who hasn't been to America in five years. There's not going to be a nationwide lockdown by the military. That's insane. It won't happen. Now they're doing it in Australia right now. Australia has been locked down for like uh, since the beginning. Australia is Australia, mate. And they're fucking terrible. And I feel bad for them. I think I'd get a headache when all the blood rushed to my head when, you know, I was on the, er, the whole, everything was upside down in the world. I don't know how they keep their coffee table shut, but you know, it's no, that's, that's, that will not, you're not going to see that doomer. You need to calm down. You're not, the, the military is not going to be out doing Australia shit. Here in every state in America, it won't happen. It just won't happen. I that's like Jack Posobiec thinks that this is going to happen, and that is a strike against you. That's it won't happen, dude. Uh, now mass mandates; those are forever. That's an easy enough sell. That's true. Vaccine passports; that's the real argument here, and that might happen over here in Florida if DeSantis loses next year. Vaccine passports for Florida. 100%. So that's a worry. But they're not doing lockdowns again. It's not going to happen. They're not doing these big things again. It was. It's too unpopular. It won't work. We've got bigger problems. Bigger problems. That was part of the Great Reset. Cyber pandemic is the big one now. And then obviously pushing the Delta variant. This is to keep people in constant state of panic. But this is... They're not doing the lockdowns again. People will not, in general America, not 
left-wing America. They will not abide by those things. They did it once before. They were good citizens. Ne they got the vaccines, and now they're being told Delta, Delta, Delta. They're not going to do it this time. I promise you, it won't happen. That's There's easier ways to do it. Why would they do lockdowns? Why would they do lockdowns when they could instead have people, uh, you know, you uh, you go out if you're allowed into places if you have the vaccine? That's the big push now. And you can say de facto you are locked down if you don't have the vaccine, but that's still not the same as what we saw in March of last year. This that we're not going to see these big lockdown things happen again, at least not for 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 COVID reasons. They may find new reasons to do it, but it's it's not that. And especially as soon as November, this is impossible. Am I wrong? I mean, I hope you're right, but I'm not optimistic. I'm not optimistic. And either. again, I you need to stop being like there's no popular support for this. It doesn't matter. We don't live in a democracy. You it's know what's not, happening in Europe right now? Of, it's not a matter of democracy. It's not a matter of democracy, but what's happening in, in, in Europe right now? Sorry. There's mass protests against the vaccine passports, and yet the vaccine passports keep getting forced through. There was a brawl on the floor of the Italian part of the parliament. People yeah, really against the vaccine passports, and yet it was still passed into law. Okay, great. In France, Macron basically told the protesters to go fuck themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and, that's what Bi and that's what Joe Biden is going to do. He's going to tell the people who are against lockdowns and masks to go fuck themselves. And how... How long historically has that worked when the supply chains are fucking broken up and people aren't getting food? Look at Not North, very well. Korea. North Korea. It's worked in North Korea for North decades. Korea, North Korea is the one place, and that's just It's North worked Korea. in Cuba. It's worked in China. Cuba is far more free than North Korea. China is far more free than, than North Korea. You know, like, they're still allowed to do things. It's it not going to be the Soviet Union for 80 years. And until it didn't? You know, 80 it, years, man. 80 years. You think you live another 80 years to see the decline of the USSA? Dude, we don't have 80 years, is the thing. You know, I, it's it, we don't have 80 years. The country is too fucking divided at this point to think that a bunch of, and And I'm sorry, did, like, did, did, the USSR have all of the goddamn guns in the entire world. You know, like you're not going to, you, you're just not going to see that. It, it, like to, to, to look at history and then go, it's exactly like this is always a flawed way of looking at it. You know, like I will be concerned when they cut off the internet entirely, which I think in my lifetime they're going to do, but you're not, I just, I, you, the lockdown thing is not going to be, they're going to be too, they're going to finesse the damn thing. It's going to be too swift for them to be able to just do what they did in March of last year. You know, people are not falling for that one again. They have to have a new trick. It has to be something new. So saying vaccine passports, that's the real battle. This is not about lockdowns. Vaccine passports is the real fucking fight. Lockdowns again is just a red herring. Like, you know, when uh, Steve Ducey asked that uh, black woman who was filling in for uh, uh, Jen Titty uh, the other day, and it was like, uh, you know, uh, w w the administration has said that they won't do lockdowns, but, you know, the CDC has said that they're open to it. She knew she had to say, because that's what her team does, she goes, we've got to follow the science. She can't say, no, we're going to deny the science because that's team follow the science. So that got Fox News to able to, you know, and Blaze TV and all that to be able to write these things like Biden administration opened a new lockdown. They're not going to do that. These guys are capitalists, dude. The, the Democrats in power right now are capitalists. They're globalist capitalists, but they are capitalists. They're not doing that shit again. They're not doing it. Like it's it's going to be way easier and force more money into Pfizer and Moderna and Johnson and Johnson's pockets. If you just say, guess what? We're doing masks again. That way you get people all riled up and then you go, you can't come here and you get the governors and the mayors and stuff to go. You can't come here unless you have the vaccine. Vaccine passports are the thing. Now lockdowns are not going to happen under the COVID thing. It's all got to push the vaccine. Does that make sense? I mean, I guess it makes sense, but I don't know. Vaccines are, or lockdowns are a red herring, man. They're not going to do it. Now is the vaccine push. That and 
there's been a lot of fucking hackings recently, which, you know, we've, we, I, I'm not sure if we talked about on the show, the goddamn cyber pandemic shit. This is, you know, cyber polygon 2020, uh, did the fucking thing. It's, it's not lockdowns. It's not lockdowns. Now it's segregation of people of the vaccinated and unvaccinated. And we'll see how it goes. And honestly, it's more effective. It's a more effective business model because you're trying to push people onto the other side by getting vaccinated. Lockdowns wouldn't do that. Masks do that because they remind everybody, oh, I hate this guy uh, who's not wearing a mask and not vaccinated. It gets them to, you know, do that thing. It's all the push to get vaccines now. Yeah, that's Wild just my stuff. concern. I, I, I don't think it'll necessarily be a government thing. It's going to be a private. It's going to be a private company thing, which yeah. is always res the result of government pressure. Yeah, See, that's bullshit. I, I hate that fucking free or just a free market do whatever thing. The the, the the private companies would not be doing this if they a weren't controlled by people who agreed with it. All of them. It's because we live in a fucking oligopoly. And b if the government wasn't pressuring them. I mean, Bronze Age pervert made the point. Do you think that Twitter could get away with banning Nancy Pelosi, for example? Right. No, no, they'd be sanctioned into fucking oblivion. Do you think? Do you think businesses like Shake Shack would be requiring vaccine passports if they weren't being pressured by like local and state governments? No, they wouldn't. Mexico, Mex Mexico is there's there's almost certainly never going to be vaccine passports here on like a mass scale because the government is against that thing. The, guy, the president of Mexico came out yesterday. He's like, yeah, don't give vaccines to children. Uh, a lot of this shit is tyrannical, you know. And That's by great. the way, I give I give my advanced condolences to his family when he dies mysteriously. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, like, I, it's like if it is more sinister and worse than, you know. Like, do you remember in March of last year when we were talking about this shit? And we were like, this is dumb and bad, whatever. Like, And then it was like, we didn't know it was like a plot to rule the fucking world. Uh it, yeah, I mean, like, if it really comes to it, it'll come there, too. But I just don't think that it's going to... I, like, I really have watched it kind of wind down. Uh, it's now a different fight. And it's really, as far as I can gather, you know, but it's impossible to know everything about all this stuff, especially as dumb as I am. And, like, uh, but it seems like it's just, like, trying to make as much fucking money as possible here and the government sees it as here's a way we can control people uh and look like the heroes doing it because there's people that think that they are heroes for doing it i'm i'm willing to you know not take a goddamn cyanide pill uh until we see what happens uh at the end of 2022 and and then i i really might start to worry a little bit more if it if it keeps going in this direction but um yeah, I just don't I just don't buy a lot of a lot of the doom and gloom around it. It's still bad. It's still horrible, but it could be way worse. And the the people in charge are not as powerful as they tend to make themselves to, uh, out to be. That is I mean, true. That is true. I mean, I think a lot of the stuff is just going to fail due to sheer incompetency. Right. Well, yeah, it's bureaucracy, man. It's the fucking DMV is the government, you know. The fucking DMV is running everything right now. They're gonna fuck this up. They're not very good. They can I have do not plan. need this. I am on my break. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's this is the people you got working for you. You know, Maxine Waters again. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. It's all TV bullshit. People are tuning out of TV more and more. Unfortunately, they're not tuning into Terrorist Radio. But you know, we'll tell your friends about us, please. People, people are starting. Notice <laughs> people are starting to listen to tear out, <laughs> which we should we should get for the tips. It's you know we're coming. Oh up on yeah, charge. I forgot about that. I'm sorry to whoever that person was. My bad. Well, it's uh right honorable for three dollars. Hell yeah. Uh, I support drug use. I think it was Steinbeck in East of Eden who described how drinking makes you think clearly. Yeah, that's what I agree with. And the right honorable fucking rules. Uh, the right honorable kicks ass, and I also support drug use and drinking. Call me DJ and all you want. I don't care. I think it rules. I think that doing drugs makes you smarter unless you do them all the time. Um, everything ex in excess. That's the quote, right? Everything in excess? Yeah, I think so. Well, I mean, you're you're best uh, to me when you're in that sweet spot of drunkenness. I know. Yeah. Drunk enough to be funny, not drunk enough that you get all sad. 
I know. I do eventually get sad. I'll get sad later today. I've stopped drinking whiskey because, like, every time it just makes me cry. Like, I I, I know that it's going to make me cry. I'll just, like, watch videos, and I'm like, well, look at that dog. He just wanted to find a home, and it was good that he found one of those people who were so nice to him. <laughs> so I, I don't drink whiskey unless I want to cry now. <laughs> toilet water says in the chat. Uh, you know who doesn't drink and do drugs? Chris Chan. And look how he ended up. <laughs> yes, yeah, we're forgetting. It was like when he started his uh, love quest back in the aughts. Like he was all like, I'm looking for a smoke free, dr drug free, you know, girl who doesn't drink. Yeah. No, I mean, he was, he was he's the strangest reactionary that's ever lived. <laughs> I mean, he did eventually start drinking, but. Did he really? That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, like around 2010 or so. But he probably didn't drink much. Like, he occasionally went to a bar and had a Long Island iced tea. Well, Long Island. I mean, you get four of those and you, you're fucking slammed. Long Island's rule, dude. I love drinking. I love fucking drinking. I'm never going to stop drinking until the doctor tells me, Brian, you can't drink anymore. Your liver's about to explode. Then I'm going to go, give me your liver, doc. Yeah, yeah. I, and the reason I know Chris Chan isn't a heavy drinker is because he would have been popped for a DUI now or crashed the car. Oh, 100,000 times. He would have hit even more people with his fucking car. Yeah, the only time he's crashed his car was intentionally into that one, that poor guy. Uh, yeah. Uh, whatever. Drinking rules. I think drugs are cool. I think, now this is, let me know if you agree with this or not. Like, I was, a, I, I was like 18 when I started. I didn't start drinking or uh, smoking or anything like that until I was 18 years old. Scared Swear. Of Scared to death of my mother. She, you know, my mother and my father, they were like, we better not catch you doing any of that. And I didn't do it. 18 years old, I'm away from them. I, you know, smoked cigarettes and drank, smoked cigarettes for a number of years. Still, I guess, kind of do, uh, but way less than I used to. I vape now. But I would say save a lot of these drugs, like pot, whatever, fine. But like save a lot of the drugs until after you're 25 and your brain's done developing. You know, don't yeah, you waste should, it all. You should not. You should not smoke pot heavily when you're a teenager and you're still growing. Right. Yeah. I think I did. wait until you'll, you're be, you'll become as you'll become as short as Bryden. That's not. It's not even true about becoming as short as me. But I am short. Five six, by the way, which is I'm king of the manlets. All right, I'm five six. That's still manlet. All right, but I'm not like one of these five three fucking. No more brother wars. You know what? Those are my brothers. All right. No more brother wars. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking mad over here, you know, trying to start bullshit. No more brother wars. <laughs> no, no, no. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> brother wars. Well, manly pride worldwide. <laughs> So is that the show? What are we doing? Uh, yeah, let's, 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 let's end the show. It's been a couple of hours, and I, I have to go to the bathroom. I got to pee so bad, dude. Oh, welcome, to P welcome to Piss House Radio. Yeah, well, in my case, it's number two, so. <laughs> Matt's gonna poop. But anyway, is there anything you want to plug, Brian? Uh, I don't know. Same thing as always. I just in the description. Come and watch me on Trovo. I, I've been doing a uh, Max Payne three uh, past couple days, which uh, that game kind of blows, Matt. It's it's not as good as the other Max There's, Payne. There games. is there is there is no such thing as Max Payne three. I, it's fine. It's fine, but it just makes me. It doesn't to exist. I, it just it's like me... the rumors of the fourth Indiana Jones movie. I. It's just not as good. Just a horrible rumor. It's still fun. It's still fun. I haven't played a Max game, uh, Max Payne game for years, but yeah, it's not it's not as good as the other ones because it tries to be cheesy, but it's not as cheesy. That, there's a cut scene every 30 seconds that always switches me into my fucking pistol. pisses me off. Um, it's fine. I'm still having fun playing it. I just it makes me want to play Spec Ops The Line, which is like one of the best fucking games ever. Oh, come on. Are you serious? That game rules. It's not the story is incredible. Place. The story is a ripoff of uh, 
fucking it's fucking eighties movies like RoboCop and The Running Man. Oh, you're a bad person for enjoying violence. You're just playing this game because you want to feel like a hero. No, I'm playing this game because I paid twenty bucks for it and no. I want to have some fun. No, you idiot. I, like the best part is like the end. He was the bad guy all along. We didn't know. Yeah, it. that's the whole point. The idea is that like you, the player, are supposed to be the bad guy. Oh, I don't know. Um, Bioshock was pretty fucking important. You're, you know what? It's I. I don't know. You play real time strategy. You play Final Fantasy fourteen and try to groom children into being trans. I don't know what you do with your time. <laughs> I don't. I don't play MMOs. I like to eat online, but I, you know, whatever, fine, whatever. All I'm saying is I liked Mafia Three as well. It's Black Rambo. The game kind of rules. It's fun. It's buggy. I, it's fun. I've never but played right. any of those games, but yeah, you have never played a game that didn't involve talking to fucking kids or something. I don't know. I kind of <laughs> get real drunk. Let's end the show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go check Brian out in Trovo. Links in the description. His website, and of course, all my shits at mattfoney.com. Yeah. Let's let's end this, and I'll do it for this episode of Terror House Radio. You can check Terror out Terror House, House Radio. Check you out can te- check out Terror House. Check out uh, Terror House Magazine at terrorhousemag.com. Terror House our books at terrorhousepress.com. Social media links in the description. Every episode Dick's of the show can be found at terrorhouseradio.com. Terror House Radio is produced by Brian Proctor and produced it's by Katya Degg. Uh, intro music by Zero Pulse. Illegitimate on cover. Run them. Don't the bastards going down. I'm Matt Forney with Brian Proctor, and we I are. I am out. gay. <laughs>